Chapter 7 How long do you think this will take? Rachel asked. She checked her watch. I set the VCR for two of my favorite shows, but I forgot to tape the movie of the week. I'm taping it, in case you miss it, Cassie said. It was dark out, but not very late. The moon was up, but hidden by the clouds. We were walking along the street, doing our best to look like normal bunch of kids just hanging out. Normal. This sucks, Tobias said from high above. I'm half blind at night, especially without moonlight. I should have gotten myself stuck as an owl. Owls are so cool, aside from the fact that some of them try to kill and eat falcons. How can you ever run in these bodies? Axe wondered. Two legs? It is absurd. 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 Not even a tail to help you stay up. Axe was in his human morph. It's a combination of DNA from me, Marco, Rachel, and Cassie. The result is kind of like looking at all of us at once, but in one body. It's really weird. Axe had almost gotten used to having a mouth when he was in his human morph. Almost. He still had the tendency to want to play with the sounds, repeating them. Plus, the boy was dangerous when he got around food. The sense of taste was just overwhelming for him. You know, Axe, now that you mention it, Marco started gyrating wildly like a guy out of control. I only have two legs. I'm falling, falling. See, I knew it must happen sometimes, Axe said, adding, happen, happen, happen. I wasn't sure if Axe knew Marco was being funny or not. Axe might have a very dry sense of humor. Or he might have no sense of humor at all. I hadn't figured it out yet. There's this place, I said. It was up ahead, at the end of the block. It was a residential neighborhood, with older houses and a few kind of low-budget shops mixed in. You know, thrift shops and car parts places and small restaurants. Our target was a single-story whitewashed building. There was only one door, and the windows were high up, narrow, and long. They were blocked off so no one could see inside. There was a small parking lot with a dozen cars in it. Over the door was a sign. The sharing. Building a better life. Yeah, right, Marco sneered. Better life for slugs from outer space. You notice the guy standing by the door? He looks like he's ready for trouble. A very large man stood by the door, muscular arms folded over his chest. But we'd expected that. Marco and Rachel and I had scoped the place out ahead of time. Ahead of time. Okay, we cut down this alley, I said. That building down there is abandoned. The basement is empty and unlocked. That's where we morph. The basement was dark and depressing and smelled of mildew. I guess it used to be part of a restaurant. There were still some old tables strewn around. There was also a lot of old beer bottles and bits of garbage. Wonderful, Rachel said in a whisper. This whole anamorph lifestyle is so glamorous. Tobias fluttered in through the open door. Then we heard a thump. Ow, man, who put a pillar there? Banged my right wing. Great, this is the guy who's supposed to be looking out for us, Marco grumbled. Axe had instantly begun to morph back to his andalite body. It is not possible to go from one morph straight to another. Just like we have to return to human form between morphs, he had to resume andalite form. Come on, let's do this and get it over with, Rachel said. I'm going to be a roach in a filthy basement. My mother would be pr so proud if she knew. Wait, Cassie said. We agree on how this works, right? We're not looking for a fight. This is a spy mission. No one do anything dramatic. Like morph into an elephant and go on a stomping spree. Cassie was looking at Rachel. Rachel had an elephant morph. She's very fond of it. Rachel laughed. Absolutely. Spy time. Stealth is my middle name. Okay. I was a little embarrassed that Cassie had brought it up. She was trying to remind everyone that Tom was one of the controllers in that meeting. Trying to remind everyone that we were just there for information. Let's morph already, Rachel said. Come on, I'll miss the movie. Five little roaches. We'll be right at home in this dump. 
Marco said as he began the transformation. You will keep the rats from eating us, won't you, Tobias? Hey, I may not see that well in the dark, but I can still catch a rat, light or no light. I am the rat killer of the universe. Axe, are you ready? Yes, Prince Jake. I am fully Andalite and ready to become your roach. A few moments later, we were five cockroaches amid the scattered garbage on the bare concrete floor. Wow, that is one big beer can, Rachel Marco said. A blue and white can towered over us, curving away into the sky. Let's, um, scurry, I said. Axe, you keep track of the time. We took off, a little knot of fast-moving roaches, all running in the same direction. You know, if this wasn't so gross, it would be kind of cool, Rachel said. Stairs? All right, a little vertical rock climbing. Tiny pinchers at the end of my legs, my six legs, grabbed the small protrusions of concrete and wedged into indivis invisible cracks. It all happened so fast and so automatically that I could run straight up the cement step, almost as fast as I can move horizontally. Up the riser, over the edge, zoom, to the next riser, up, over, across, to the top of the four stairs. You know... <laughs> You guys are giving me the willies, Tobias said. You should see yourselves. The urge to step on you is pretty strong. If I had shoes. I never did like roaches. This from a guy who disembowels live mice for lunch, Marco said. Don't knock it if you haven't tried it, Tobias shot back. In some corner of my mind, I noted the fact that Tobias seemed more and more at peace with his weird life. Half bird, half human. But mostly my mind was on the job at hand. We had reached the threshold. We scampered across it and into the alley. The alley was a mix of gravel and cracked, torn up blacktop. The blacktop was like running across hard oatmeal, all bumpy and uneven. The gravel was more difficult. The pieces of rock were as big as we were. And even with our six clever legs, there was a lot of stumbling and slipping. I'm going airborne, Tobias said. You're out on the sidewalk. Turn left. There's better light out here, so I'll be able to watch you from atop the telephone pole. Okay, we better spread out. Don't forget, these are controllers. Yerks. They believe there's a group of Andalite warriors running around loose. In other words, they'll be on the lookout for morphs. So act like normal roaches. You mean I should crawl inside an open box of cereal? Marco asked. I had that happen once. I almost ate the bug. Ugh. We fanned out, staying several inches apart as we moved toward the building. I stopped when I reached the whitewashed cinder block of the exterior wall. Crack! Cassie called. I found a big crack here. I'm going in. The rest of us waited. I felt obvious just sitting there. Obvious and helpless. The big guy at the door could decide to step on me. I couldn't see him, but I knew he was there. This is good, Cassie said from deep in the wall. I think we can follow it all the way inside. One by one, we scurried to her location. I felt better when I was inside the crack. Until I thought about what would happen if I tried to demorph in such a tight spot. I don't even want to start thinking about that. We're going in, Tobias, I called to him. Get somewhere safe. I'm cool, he said. Good luck. We were traveling single file, sideways, along the crack. It was like exploring a cave. There was no light, but my antenna felt the way, picking up the sense of the others, reading the tiny air currents, sniffing for familiar aromas. Then I saw a faint light that grew brighter as I advanced. Cassie was in the lead. It worked. It goes all the way inside. I'm inside. I saddled up beside her. I could see through the crack opening now. I could see brilliant light, and I could feel vibration. The vibration of sound, of speech. I concentrated. It was impossible to tell much about the voice, who it was. It seemed too high to be someone old. Was it Tom? I listened to the words. The day is here at last. It is time to strike the decisive blow in the invasion of Earth. Chapter 8 What is this, a York pep rally? Marco wondered. Cassie started giggling. Well, thought speak giggling. And pretty soon all of us, except for Axe, were laughing silently. 
It was a very nervous laughter. We need to get out of this crack, I said. Spread out a little. We look too obvious just sitting here, and we should try to see if we can identify some of these people. Move out. But wait, not all at once. Too late. We were all scampering down the wall from the crack to the floor. If anyone watching it, it would have looked like the invasion of the roaches. Five roaches moving all together is an easy thing to notice. But I had forgotten one thing. Humans hate roaches. A human will spot a roach very quickly. But Yurks couldn't care less. Even though these were all human controllers, they're with their fellow Yurks now. They didn't have to keep up the human act. No one stomped us. Although I waited for a big shoe to drop from the sky. We separated a little and then headed along the edge of the wall, where bare concrete floor met painted cinder block walls. Hey guys, can you hear me? It's Tobias. Just barely, but I can still understand you, I called back. Thought speak gets weaker over distances, same as regular speech. Although walls and so aren't a problem. There's a car pulling up outside here, a limo. And there are two other cars with it, full of very tough-looking dudes. What are they doing? Getting out now, like six guys. They have guns. I can see them under their coats. Now there's a guy getting out of the back of the limo. Who is it? Or should I say, what is it? He's a human. He staggered a little, walking toward the door. He looks like a normal guy. But all the others are acting very nervous, and I know this sounds dumb, but I get a bad feeling from this guy. Now I can hear the vibrations of many feet walking past. They're coming our way now, Tobias. Thanks for the warning. I tried to use my eyes, but they were hopeless as in, at any kind of distance. All I could tell was that several men had arrived and were marching through the room. My brother is in arms. Some loud, booming voice said. I present to you our leader, Visitor 3. There was a gasp from the crowd. There was a silent gasp from us, too. Mr. 3? Mr. 3 had an Andalite body. He was the only Yurk ever to obtain an Andalite body, with all its morphing power. But surely Tobias would have mentioned seeing an Andalite getting out of a car. I see that some of you are surprised, a new voice said. Surely you must know that I can morph a human as well as any other body. Oh, man, Marco said. Mr. Three can morph a human? Certainly, Axe said, just as I do. Humans are animals, after all. You have DNA. The voice we now knew as Mr. Three spoke in a hard, curt tone. It was odd hearing his words. We had only ever heard him thought speak before. Now he had a voice. And if we could only see it, a human body. But he was too far away for our weak and distorted roach vision. This mission has two parts. One, we will use the front hospital to take involuntary hosts. I expect to be able to make 200 new controllers per Earth month. We will concentrate on police, broadcasters, writers, teachers, people in finance, and especially anyone in the position of political power. There was a murmur of excitement from the assembled crowd. Just what we were afraid of, I said. Unfortunately, Marco agreed. Man, 200 new controllers a month? You have done well recruiting human doctors and nurses, so that we now control the hospital facility. But this brings me to the second part of the mission, Mr. Three said. Until now, this secret was known only to me in a very small group. The room was almost totally silent, listening, anticipating. The second part of my plan is even more important than the first. In a few seconds, the governor of this state will have some minor surgery performed. His secretary is one of us, and she has steered him to our facility. He will check in for the minor surgery. When he checks out, he will belong to us. No, Rachel gasped. What does it mean? What is governor? Is this some sort of prince? Axe asked. Yeah, a prince. The governor controls the state police, I said. And the National Guard. And the schools. It's worse than that, Rachel said grimly. 
Don't you guys ever pay attention to politics? What are you talking about? Don't you know? Our governor is getting ready to run for president next year. A year from now, there could be a controller in the White House. A White House? What does this all mean? Axe asked. It means that one of them could be the most powerful man in the most powerful nation on Earth, I said. And that would be the ball game, Marco said. Then all would be lost? Yeah, Axe. All would be lost. Chapter 9 Let's bail. We've learned all we need to know, I said. Back to the crack? Cassie asked. Yeah, we know the way. I turned and headed back to the crack. It was only a foot or so away. In a few seconds, we would all be safe. I could not believe what I had heard. It was insane. If the Yurks succeeded, we were toast, pure and simple. As long as it was a secretive war between us and the Yurks who did not want to be discovered, we could maybe stay alive. But if all the power of the state police were turned against us too, the situation would be out of... Suddenly... A strange vibration in the air above me. Danger! Run! Whoop! It was like someone had dropped an entire three-bedroom house an inch in front of me. The impact was awesome. The wind it caused was like a small but intense hurricane. It whipped my antenna back. Someone almost stepped on me, I yelled to the others. Look out! Visser, forgive my interruption, but there are several small insects here. A general murmur from the crowd, then one voice saying, Don't worry, they're only cockroaches. They're everywhere on this planet. Fool! Visitor 3 exploded. Do you think Andalites cannot morph creatures so small? Someone kill this fool for me. Blam! Blam! I felt the world spinning around me. Someone had been shot. Was it... Tom? Could it have been? A new rush of air overhead. I could see something monstrously huge falling towards me. Speeding down, ready to crush me. I bolted. (laughs) Millimeters from my tail. Kill those insects, Fisser 3 screamed. Everyone for himself, I yelled. Spread out, run, get into cracks. Let the roach brains guide you. I took my own advice and relinquished control to the raw instincts and cunning of the tiny roach brain. Say what you will about roaches. They're gross, they're disgusting. But man, when it comes to staying alive, that primitive roach brain knew its business. Woof! Woof! Ah! Axe yelled. Axe, are you okay? Yes. Yes, barely. Huge feet, each the size of Greyhound Buzz, stomped the ground. But each time, the roach brain moved me in just the right way, at just the right speed. They missed me by so little that I could feel the leather and rubber scrapes my side and tail as they impacted around me. I made it to the corner of the wall and hugged in there as close as I could get. They're on me, Cassie screamed. I can't get away. Oh man, I don't want to die like this. Get to the wall. Get off the floor. I was blazing along at top speed as shoes tried to kick into kick it into the corner. All I needed was a tenth of an inch and I could scrape past, uninjured. Squeech! A running shoe was being dragged along the corner, straight towards me. A soft rubber melded perfectly into space. It would crush me. I saw it coming, a black wall, a black locomotive rushing at me. I jumped. I landed on the shoe as it came near. Whoosh. I was flying through the air on a magic carpet made of canvas. The man kicked. I lost my grip and went flying through the air. I'm clear, I'm clear, Cassie called. I found another crack. I felt like I was going supersonic, like a jet, tumbling out of control through the air. Wait, I had wings. Too late. I hit the wall. It should have killed me. It would have killed me if I had been human, but I weighed less than an ounce. The impact was hard, but not enough to hurt me. I fell on the floor. A tent of some sort of gray, black... A newspaper! It was a crumpled piece of newspaper on the floor. I dove beneath it and froze. I looked up and saw that it was a photograph. I can make sense of the photo, of course. Or I couldn't make sense of the photo. It was just a big black dots and ink. I could make out letters, each as big as my head. I'm clear, Axe called. I'm with Cassie. Good. That was two of them safe. Rachel? Marco? 
I'm on a guy's sock, Rachel reported. He doesn't know I'm here. Wait, we're outside. I'm going to drop off. Clear, clear, I'm outside. Marco? Yeah, Jake? Where are you? I'm in a place where I hope, where I really, really hope no one flushes, Jake. You're in a toilet? They have a bathroom. It seemed like a natural place for a roach. I'm chilling for a minute, and then I'm going to try for the hole in the wall where the pipe goes. How about you? I'm not so good. I'm under a newspaper, but they're still stomping all around. Sooner or later, they'll stomp here. I have to make a run for it. I'm going to try for the door. Once they get outside, they'll never get me in the dark. Good luck, man, Marco said. Yeah, you too, my friend. Then my antenna picked up a strange new scent. Sweet, oily, dangerous somehow. I sensed that. It hit me in a flash. Marco, they have bug spray. I blew out from under the paper. There, there's one. Vibration of a dozen feet running after me. And in the air behind me, a vast fountain that seemed to explode from thin air. An upside down fountain, like a rainfall that came from a single point and spread out to fill the air. A droplet landed on me, then a number. Another. I felt my legs stumble. The door, I could sense it just ahead. Wimp! A foot, a near miss. I was slowing down. I could feel my roach instincts becoming scrambled. I was poisoned. The nerve gas was beginning to work. My legs were tangling up. My antenna were waving frantically, unable to smell anything but the deadly rain of poison. That got him, a voice said. Don't crush him, Mr. Three yelled. He made to morph to save himself, and we'll have ourselves an andalite. I was starting to twitch. I couldn't breathe. And then, faster by far than the feet that had chased me, some new shape swooped down. I tried to run, but I no longer could. Three monstrous cables closed around me, and I was up, up off the floor. Hang in there, Jake, Tobias said. It's me. Red-tailed airline welcomes you aboard, and I'm hauling my feathered butt out of here.